We explained how to implement autocomplete and correction suggestions a while back in this blog post. But now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through each of the steps to help make everything clear. Getting autocomplete to work is pretty simple, especially using this example. In order to follow along, you'll need the LAMP stack, Sphinx, and PHP with PDO for MySQL. We should have all this up and running in just a few minutes, so let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the finished product. You can see that we'll be auto-completing on the title field, and the content is taken from Sphinx's documentation. To grab all the necessary files, let's go here. Then, once you've downloaded the files, go edit sphinx.conf. It's in the scripts folder. Then, you'll have to go through and put the appropriate database connection details and path information in these places. Now, inside the scripts folder you've got some files to untar. Untar them like so. And we should have some SQL files to put into our database. Let's load them up with these commands. And now we'll have some tables that look something like this. So let's go take a look at common.php. On line 9, you should update the database connection details to match your setup. Now, our example PHP is good to go, and the data is hanging out in some tables waiting to be indexed by Sphinx. So, let's point indexer to sphinx.conf, the configuration file. For me, it's here in var slash www slash autocomplete slash script slash sphinx.conf. And let's index all the indexes defined there, like so. You'll notice that Sphinx is telling us some things have changed since Adrian put up this example. The car set type, max matches, and enable star were removed from the Sphinx configuration options. And we referenced those in our configuration file, so Sphinx is just warning us. We can proceed as usual. And if you want, you can go read about the changes in Sphinx in our documentation, in the change logs. You can also see that we just successfully indexed those three indexes, suggest, simple complete, and simple complete full. Now we can go open up our browsers and give autocomplete a try. Let's see what happens. I open up my browser and check out index.php. I search for something, and as soon as I hit three characters, a query is sent that produces a drop down list and gives me a bunch of suggestions. Exactly what I wanted. As you can see, when I first open the page, because I've set PHP to give me all sorts of errors, we're being warned that total found hasn't been defined. That's because we haven't searched for anything yet. To make this go away, just add an if condition to index.php. And you'll see that on line 76 we're printing out the value of total found. Let's just change it so that only if the count of docs is greater than zero will we echo the total number of documents found. Like this. And. If you're curious about those AJAX calls, let's go take a look at footer.php. The interesting stuff is happening right here, between these script tags. But rather than explain all this jQuery stuff to you, I'll refer you to the manual, which will do a much better job than I could. I'd suggest taking a look at the section on the source option and everything else. But, in short, what's happening here is that Adrian has set up the jQuery autocomplete plugin to fire queries at Sphinx when the user has typed more than three characters. 
He also set it up so that the term being searched is bolded in the drop down list. But we'll save those details for another day. We've accomplished our goal of setting up the example. So go play around with it, dig into the example code, learn what you can, then implement it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Bye bye.